everyone welcome back to my channel so today we're going to talk about how to find an equivalent fraction using pattern blocks so a lot of teachers have tons of bins of pattern blocks in their classrooms some people don't you can check out the description box below for a link to pattern blocks if you don't have them and you want to purchase them they're not a lot um, you can get a small bag of pattern box for the price of like a fast food meal so I think kids at home should even have tons of pattern box just to create math art to practice with counting to practice with geometry to practice with even fractions so we're going to look at if I had this hexagon and it represented one whole, like one, how many of these trapezoids would I need to cover this hexagon? So I can take one, and I still see, so now I know about half of the hexagon is filled. So one trapezoid is half of a hexagon. Now I see that two of those trapezoids covers the whole hexagon so two trapezoids can cover that one hexagon so if i only use one trapezoid how much does that cover of the hexagon one half so using beginning to use that vocabulary with students helps to build up their understanding and their knowledge of fractions before we even get to using our fraction numbers or fraction symbols okay so now what about our rhombus. How many rhombus or rhombi do you need to fill or cover that hexagon? So we carefully place our rhombus on there. We can see that three rhombi covers that one whole hexagon. So you need three of them to equal or be equivalent to that one whole, that one hexagon. What do we call call it when it takes three pieces of something to make a whole. Each piece is a third size or it's a third, okay? Because we need three of them to create that whole. What if we use these triangles? How many triangles would we need to cover that hexagon? Oh look, okay, so now we see one, two, three, four, five, six of the triangles cover the, covers the hexagon. So we know six of these pieces together make one whole. But if I looked at one of them, what is the size of this piece? It is a sixth. We call it a sixth because we need six of them together to make one whole. So this is a great way to introduce equivalent fractions to students to understand we can use many of one piece to cover or equal the same size of another piece. So if we move the hexagons out of the way and we made the trapezoid our whole, how many triangles do we need to cover that trapezoid? So I can see that we need three triangles to cover the size of that trapezoid. So now, because the trapezoid is one hole, we've switched the size of our hole. Now these triangles represent what size pieces? Now they represent a third, okay? And that's the great thing about fractions. It all depends on the size of your hole. This is not always a hole. This can also be a hole, it depends. Think about the size of a candy bar. Do you have a Snickers? Do you have a full Snickers or do you have a mini Snickers? Each of them is a whole candy bar, but it depends on which one you're referring to. So right now, if this was my hole, I would need three triangles to be equivalent to that hole and that each triangle would represent a third. If the hexagon was my hole, then I would need six of these and then the triangle becomes a six. Let's look at the rhombus. So if the rhombus was a hole, how many triangles would I need then? I need two. So now, what would the triangle represent? What size pieces are the triangle now? Well, since there are two of them that make up the hole, if 
I take one away, that's covering half of my whole. So these are now halves. So that's the great thing about with fractions. We don't want, we're teaching students and introducing fractions to students. We don't want them to get stuck on one size is always a half or one size is always a third. It's about that total amount of pieces in relationship to the whole part. So this is a great way to introduce students to equivalent fractions is by using hands-on materials, manipulative, using pattern blocks. Of course, you can use other ways. You can use paper, you can they can draw it with marker. You can use fraction tiles, fraction circles. There's so many different things and manipulatives out there to help students understand equivalent fractions. But this is a great way to utilize the manipulatives that are already in your classroom or if you want to purchase them again a small kit is not that much it's probably this the price of a fast food meal at your local restaurant all right so this is one way to show equivalent fractions